We all know if you have a disease, that's usually just the tip of the iceberg. The real root cause, the problem, is underneath. And that's where hypothermia, a fever treatment, is actually one of those treatments that deals with that underlying cause in a very massive way. Now, fever is very often completely misunderstood. It's seen as a disease. Well, it's promoted as a disease. We need to stop it, take a Panadol to drop the fever because fever is dangerous. Well, that's not really the case. Fever is the healing reaction of your body. When you understand what happens during fever, you know that you need it. As soon as you go into a higher temperature and your core body temperature rises, your body produces massive amounts of white blood cells, killer cells, fighting your army, your defense army that then deals with infections, deals with inflammation, deals with all the toxins and takes that out. So it's a healing response of your body. That's why when you have an infection, it gets hot. It's a local um, reddening of the area and that's where your body sends more blood supply. And there is a saying, if your body can't catch the invader locally, it sets the whole house on fire. And that's when you get a whole systemic fever. Now, children need several fever bursts throughout their youth in order to develop a full functioning immune system. So, like Rudolf Steiner said, there is seven uh, different childhood diseases which we all had you know measles mums rubella we go through all of those and we develop from that our immune system it's like the training battlefield and it's always at around a certain age when all of a sudden the outbreak comes you have high fever you lay in bed you're three days three days knocked out and then your body has learned to deal with those infections and can handle them and then the immune system is so strong has built up so much power that it reduces the virus, reduces the bacteria, and you're fit for life, you're fit for your future. Unfortunately, all of that is rendered useless with our medical education that we gain today. We need to vaccinate, we need to, and we cause more damage by preventing those diseases than if we don't. So fever is known as one of the most powerful treatments for all infectious diseases. Whether you have herpes, whether you have AIDS, whether you have Lyme's disease, whether you have, you know, fungus growth, candida, all of that is addressed by having a fever. Now that's only something you need to do once a week in a critical situation. If you have reduced your load, you do it every second week. If you really feel great, you do it every third week. But you maintain it as a regular practice to detoxify and boost your immune system. And that's something a lot of cancer patients do. They go to the clinic, they have three week very intense treatments in Germany, in Switzerland, in Austria, and then they come back home. And then usually everything starts to deteriorate. Then they go back, give themselves a boost, and then they go back home. Now what you can do is with hypothermia at home, you can do this treatment regularly and keep up with a strong immune system. Keep up with an incredible burst to deal with infections, to deal with, uh, we have here more infections, and this just shows what I've just explained. When you have bacteria, splinter, or any kind of infection, a wound, then your body produces massive amounts of those white blood cells who all eat up the bacteria. The swelling is created to create more blood flow, and then once all the uh, cells are dead, then the phagocytes go back into the bloodstream, detoxify through the liver, and that's it. So it's a very normal healing system that we have on a local level, and if it becomes systemic, it helps us grow and become immune to disease. And this is actually a chart that shows before the patient had as a dark field microscope, and we really searched the whole slide back and forth and up and down, and we found one white blood cell. Now, he already had to stop his treatment in the clinic because his white blood lead count was so low. So we couldn't find any. He had one hypothermia treatment, one single one at night. And the next morning when we checked, we had already about six times, seven times the amount. We did two days later, checked again, and 
his blood, white blood cell count was massively increased. And that's why this is not me inventing something. This is a treatment that is done even in university clinics, in conventional clinics in Europe, because when the white blood cell count goes down, you have to stop chemotherapy. You can't continue the treatment because you would kill the patient. So what they do is they do at the same time hypothermia. They reduce all the side effects dramatically. You know, you don't have hair falling out. You don't have swelling. You don't have toxicity, neuropathy, all of those diseases because due to hypothermia, all of that is bypassed and detoxified. So it's a very powerful treatment that they do in other countries, regular, standard. So if you'd miss out, look at hypothermia at home and you can find a blue button below, click on that and we take you through a learning curve where you learn how to do it, how to do it safely, how to prepare the environment and then what you need to do to make it really helpful to your system. Now toxicity is another problem. We know we have heavy metal toxicity and we have plastic toxicity, which are the main, you know, teratogens, mutagens and carcinogens. So they are the three main ones that we need to get rid of. And all three are excreted through the skin. So when you look at babies born, and this is the study of the 10 American babies, and they've inherited from their parents, you know, 287 um, toxins, chemical pollutants, pesticides in the blood, 287 um, detected in the umbilicum cord and blood and 134 cause cancer, 158 um, toxic to the brain and nervous system, like heavy metals, for example, which we know from autism. Then we have 186 cause infertility. Guess why the rates are going up? And 150 cause birth defects. That's the mutagenic and teratogenic toxins. And that's already at birth. And now you go through puberty and then you go through your adolescence time where you really don't care and you consume massive amounts of toxins, you might smoke, all of that is accumulated in the body until the barrel overflows. And to take that out is very tough work for your liver. You know, your liver needs to clean um, cleaning products, pesticides, water pollution, medication, food additives, alcohol, air fresheners, air pollution, and personal care products, you know, cosmetics, really dangerous. So the liver is completely overworked. And instead of going everything through the liver and everything through the kidneys, what we do here is we take it out through the skin. And that's a huge relief. A lot of people have DNA impairments. They cannot detoxify through the liver. They just can't break down heavy metals. They can't break down the toxics, uh, toxicity from xenoestrogens and plastics. So when you have that impairment, you know, you're stuck. You're stuck and get more and more poisoned and get sicker and sicker and can't respond. And that's where hypothermia bypasses all. First of all, you have a lot more immunity, a lot more immune cells to work with. You have a massive oxygenation. Plus, at the same time, you detoxify all of those things in a big way. And that gives you a huge support. Now, a lot of people say, well, can I do that in a normal sauna? Yes, you can, but you'll never get to fever, which means you're missing out on producing more white blood cells. And that's why doing a hypothermia treatment, you know, the dome, we've had that specially built for us, increased in power, increased in intensity. It has the heat coming from underneath or far infrared from underneath, double the power in your torso, down in your legs. And that allows you to have fever, and you can do two times a week just a normal sweat treatment. So use it as a sauna and use it as a hypothermia dome to really kick back into life. A lot of patients, when they go to a clinic, they can't remember when they had last time fever. And that's a very common denominator for all cancer patients. Now when they start, they might not get straight into heavy fever. Their body hasn't learned to release toxins in that way. So they might have one or two treatments and then all of a sudden all channels open up, they start to sweat, they start to detoxify and they go up in temperature and produce massive amounts of white blood cells which then really kickstarts that whole healing process back into gear. And to learn about this treatment more, to really find all the underlying research studies that are associated with it, 
just click the blue button below and that takes you to a webinar replay. It takes you to a whole training program where you can learn how to do hypothermia at home and support your healing in a massive 